getting to the point the numbers are hard to even follow as they rise faster every day. We told you yesterday about some of the bleak predictions from that University of Washington model the White House has been using. And today that model paints an even darker picture with more than 2,500 deaths expected per day for several days at the peak, expected around April 16th, a day later than was thought originally. The model also now ultimately predicts more than 93,000 people will die from the virus nationwide by August 4th. But for many, those numbers still don't quite hit home. So how about these from the same model? Specifically looking at Massachusetts, where the coronavirus peak is expected on April 17th, and it's predicted that close to 100 people a day will be dying for days around that time. 100 friends, 100 neighbors, community members every day. By mid-May, the model expects more than 2,300 people will have died here. And as for hospital resources, the analysis anticipates will be more than 4,500 hospital beds short at the peak of this crisis, more than 1,100 of which will be ICU beds, and will need more than 1,100 invasive ventilators. I'm joined now by one of the researchers behind these numbers, Dr. Ali Mokdad, an epidemiologist and professor at the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Doctor, I really appreciate your joining us. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Good afternoon. And to you, too. You look at four ways to limit social contact, closing schools, stay-at-home measures, limiting travel, and non-essential businesses. And by the way, on your website, you break it down state by state for people watching. So let me take an example and see if I understand this. Uh, after much delay, the governor of Florida today, apparently based on your advice, decided finally to implement this stay-at-home measure. Is it fair to say that that delay will mean more deaths in Florida, more infections in Florida than had he done it, say, when Massachusetts or New York had done it? Well, let's look forward. His decision today will save more lives ahead, and it's a right and sound decision. And by doing, implementing the social distancing, uh, to be fair for Florida, some of the cities in Florida have implemented the social distancing before, but it wasn't a... Uh, Florida-wide decision. And it's very important for a governor to issue such a wide decision because people will listen. And it's confusing when a county and next door county are doing something differently. So, But it sounds to me like you're trying to avoid the negative and be more optimistic. But if I do understand your model, by definition, had he taken this action earlier, let's put it the other way, even more lives would have been saved and even fewer infections would have, been, would have happened. That is correct, is it not? That's very correct. If all of us in the United States, not only Florida, and I'm not trying to shy away from, uh, yes, Florida would have saved more life if he made that decision sooner. Mm -hmm. Same would be New York, same would be my state, Washington. We knew about this virus circulating in January in China. We knew the first cases come to, to us in second months. And many of us implemented these measures in March. You know, doctor, as you know far better than I, some countries have shut down airports. Some country, countries have stopped all travel in and out uh, of them. Uh, uh, we haven't come close to that, needless to say, either on state levels or federally. Is that something that we should be doing? Yes, we should have done this earlier. You know, from my accent, I was born and raised in Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon. Lebanon shut down the schools before the United States shut down its schools. Lebanon shut down the airport. No planes come to Beirut airport before any airport here was shut down in the U.S. And yes, we should have done this much earlier. In retrospective, it's easier to say that. But staying at home will save lives. Shutting down businesses will save lives. Staying all of us, assuming that we are infected and we shouldn't spread the virus to our loved one, as you said early on in the show, it will save a lot of lives. So, Doctor, as I said, the peak is in mid-April nationally, approximately, according to you and your colleagues, 2,600 people dying a day. The peak in Massachusetts a day later, 99 deaths. By mid-May, the 2,400. Is there more we should be doing? This governor, this state, has won praise for being aggressive in many areas. Is there more that places like Massachusetts should be doing than we currently are to reduce those numbers? You know, there is a difference between putting an order to, for people to say stay at home and adherence to that order. There's some encouraging news today that 
when we talk to Americans, they're staying at home and they're listening. We can do better by more of us staying at home and really limiting our outing unless we have to. And if we have to, to really practice safe distances, six feet at least from everybody else. So if these things, if these voluntary things in so many states in these four areas were mandates, were uh, uh, orders, uh, that would be a step in the right direction, according to you as well, I assume. Exactly. If, if we are strict in terms of telling people to stay at home and people are listening to us, yes, we will save lives. The virus passes from one person to person. It's not going to come to me if I'm staying at home unless I go out and bring it to my own house. And if we sit all of us for 14 days, the, the incubation period of the virus, a large percentage of Americans, except for those people who really have to do our police force, our firefighter, our doctors, we can save a lot of lives and we can you know, come to a conclusion much faster, open our businesses, save our economy and our loved ones. You know, uh, I should say to you in advance, in the spirit of full disclosure, I got a D in statistics. So apologies for the following question. I looked at the three states that were closest in population to Massachusetts, and they're Indiana, Arizona, and Tennessee. We have virtually the same population, roughly 7 million people. Indiana and Arizona, on your model, have far fewer infections projected, far fewer deaths, Tennessee far more. Why? It's a function of uh, how, uh, how big your cities are and how people are crowded within a city. Massachusetts is, uh, you know, they're more rural area in Arizona, for example, and they have a big city, Phoenix, Arizona. But you guys are in Boston. This is a big city where, like New York, where people are in face of each other and there is more spread of the virus. Uh, if you were uh, the czar of... Uh the federal government right now had unilateral power to make changes. What are the what would be at the top of your list that you would do immediately to lessen the impact of this horror here? Stress the measures of staying at home. One, use the data that we have right now to better allocate resources that we limited resources that we have as ventilators come into play, send them to the right place. You said correctly that in Massachusetts, you will have an earlier peak. So I'll send it to you first. Florida will have a later peak. They can go to Florida after using our resources and the input that we have to maximize the output that we can do is what I will be focusing my time on working with FEMA and all the suppliers to make sure people who need it at the time they need it, they have. Your model assumes that we will limit uh, uh, social contact through the end of May. Then what do we assume? How far after states reach these peaks do we still have to honor the four golden rules, the four uh, uh, the criteria, the four uh, examples of limiting contact for how long? You know, this is a new virus that we're learning as we go as much as we can about it. So we're learning today, for example, uh, some studies are coming out that even people who are cured and test negative, they are still shedding the virus. We're learning also from studies that people who are asymptomatic could have the disease and could be spreading the virus. So this will increase our range of being conservative and be very careful. So my recommendation would be based on the data I see right now, if we are to come back to normal, and we will, to do it slowly in case the virus is still circulating out there. We don't want a setback. We want to be cautious what we can open first, how many people are allowed to mingle together. Then if we see there is nothing, we can go. Remember, we're all susceptible for this virus. We've never seen it before. If it spreads again, many of us will get the infection. We shouldn't relax before we are 100% sure it's time to relax and let the data tell us not a political decision, more of a scientific decision. Only 15 okay. seconds. In your business, are you an optimist, doctor? Very optimist. We've been through this before. I've seen many outbreaks. Uh, we will come out of it much faster. We need to inform our public. They're smart. They'll do what's right for them, for their families, and for the country. Well, you made us a lot smarter. Thanks so much, Dr. Ali Mokdad. We really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thank you. If you're interested in looking at Dr. Mokdad's analysis of your state's future, visit the address on your screen, covid19.healthdata.org.